It's not particularly surprising when audio companies break their promises. I know I talk about this all the time. Like, all the time. I get it. You might get depressed with all this negativity, but frankly, you should complain to those companies for being so awful. However, sometimes you come across products that perform exactly as promised. The Sivka Phoenix, Aventone Planar, Monolith M1570 are just a few examples. Today, we talk about the Audio-Technica ATH-R70X, a $350 headphone that has been around for a while but barely reviewed. It is Audio-Technica's first pair of open-back reference headphones. These are supposedly the flagship of the professional line. Is this headphone just another product marketed with lies? Or does it fall in line with the likes of the Phoenix, Aventone Planar, and the M1570? The photos of the R70 don't really give a good impression of this headphone. Audio-Technica decided to implement a unique style that may or may not sit well with people. Their winged headband system is a standout feature, but so is the predominantly plastic construction. Audio-Technica boasts that the R70 is lightweight and good for extended listening, obviously good things for everyone, not just professionals. But to achieve this, the R70 is a weird combination of plastic and some metal. I'm not sure the weight saving was worth it. The ear cups are plastic, the wings are plastic, the audio jack ports are plastic, the yoke is plastic, the headband is metal however and does feel sturdy. The ear pads are fairly shallow and not particularly padded. The ear pads do not make a full seal around my ears and there is a gap at the back. The top and bottom of my ears also get pinched, which means that these are not actually over-ear headphones. The ear cups have left and right movement and do not move up and down. That makes conforming to your head a bit less natural and this seems like a curious oversight by Audio-Technica. The R70 has significant clamping force. I've had these headphones for about 4 weeks and they have yet to loosen up. It is a matter of time before they finally break in, but meanwhile my ears are not that happy. I think the bit of the R70X is fine. There is nothing special here and you can find much sturdier build in cheaper headphones. I am not convinced that the winged headband padding is a good idea. Yes, the wing design prevents hot spots on the very top of your head, but you still feel the headphones pushing down on the sides. The ear pads should have been a little bit more plush, if not bigger. Overall, the build is nothing exceptional and is not professional quality. There is so much plastic in this headphone that you should be careful how you use them. Of course, Audio-Technica does not bother to give us a protective case. I bought these headphones in a package that included the Takoni headband carrying case, however. Comfort is not there, at least not yet. The clamping force makes the earpads feel oppressive after about an hour. Your mileage will vary, but this headphone is certainly not as comfortable out of the box as Audio-Technica would have you believe. There is something refreshing about companies that do not make flamboyant promises. On the one hand, you have no idea what to expect, and on the other hand, you have no real expectations and can simply enjoy whatever it is that you get. Anyway, Audio-Technica doesn't really make a whole lot of promises about the sound of the R70X. They say that the headphone provides accurate and natural open back sound. The company boasts that the headphone is made for the most critical listening tasks and that it has natural and spacious open back sound. All of this interesting potpourri of vague statements is, well, not particularly helpful. By accurate and natural, I do not really know if Audio-Technica is saying that the R70X is neutral. You can read into it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. When the company says that the headphone is for critical listening and has spacious sound, then I interpret those statements as the R70X having detail and wide soundstage. To you, all of this language might just be gobbly goop. 
in order to test the vague claims about the R70, I used two different sources. I plugged the headphones into the RME ADI2 DAC, as well as onto my Rebel Amp and JDS L DAC combo. The Rebel Amp was on high gain. Both of these sources are neutral, but the Rebel Amp is ever so slightly U-shaped with a marginally warmer presentation. I used Amazon Music HD. By the way, the R70X is a high impedance headphone. It is 470 ohms, which is an odd number. Consequently, whatever source you use, make sure it has plenty of power. The R70X has an interesting bass response that is half typical open back headphone and half closed back sound signature. Regardless, it is distortion free. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, the song has a deep sub bass rumble that permeates the song from beginning to end. The R70X rolled off the sub bass rumble. The decay was fairly long, not quite accurate in the mid bass. This was not a big deal, but the lack of sufficient sub bass presence was. Whatever sub bass was present melded with the mid bass, but did not distort. When the crescendo hit at the middle of the song, the organ cut through and melded heavily with the other instruments. The thunderous rumble was audible and did not overwhelm the other instruments. Separation of instruments was lacking, and although the sound was not per se muddy, it was not the clearest rendition of this song I have heard. The vocals that chime in at 3 minutes and 10 seconds were audible and did appear more forward from all the other instruments, if by only a step. In Conquer by Overwork, the R70 did not accurately recreate the rolling marble sound at the beginning of the song. I could hear the panning left to right, which was true, but the timbre of the instrument was not. There are several drums in this song and the R70 rendered all of them on top of each other, combining the tonalities and melding them. Again, this did not result in a muddy presentation. The synth sounded accurate and was not harsh. Mid-bass impact was slightly blunted, making it appear as though there was a thin bed sheet draped over the speaker. I listened to several hip-hop songs including Pure Water, Uproar, New Patek, and Reel It In. On each song, the R70X rolled off the sub-bass and the song sounded bass light in that regard. Hip-hop songs should have a subwoofer effect, but the R70X was not able to recreate it. Mid-bass decay was about average, nothing like planar headphones, and no different from most dynamic drivers that I have heard. Mid-bass impact sounded just a little bit blunted. Vocals stood out about two steps from the rest of the mix, the requisite sparkle was present, there was no harshness in the vocals. I listened to Bim Bam Smash from the Born Supremacy soundtrack. This track has several drums, all of which have different tonalities. The R70 was able to recreate those drums, though they did meld a little. Decay was, again, average. Mid-bass impact was also slightly blunted. At 1 minute and 15 seconds into the song, there is a significant drum slam that should be like the sound of a car hitting another car. In other words, there should be a forceful, airy impact. The R70 rendered that sound, but it was not quite accurate. It sounded a little blunted and lacked the punching emphasis that I can hear in the Aventone Planar and the Odyssey LCD XC. Overall, the bass response was kind of a mixed bag. The sub bass is pretty normal for open bag headphones. Yes, the headphone measures down to 5 Hz, but that means literally nothing. If you cannot hear the sub bass, it does not matter what is actually measured. However, Mid bass is more reminiscent of close back headphones like the DT770. It is fairly hard, and given that the R70X is an open back, rather impressive. True, I have heard harder mid bass in the Aventone Planar, but we are talking two different driver structures. I have heard more clarity in other headphones as well. The Aventone Planar, Sipka Phoenix, Monolith M1570, and Bass Audio G12 all have clearer bass overall than what the R70 provides. On the other hand, the R70's presentation is clearer than what I hear on the LCD-1 and the Neumann NDH-20. As I said, it is a unique sound signature. It is neither good nor bad, just different. And different is good. The R70's mids rendition is interesting. Again, it's a mixed bag of open and closed bag signatures. In Orla Gartlett's song, Why Am I Like This, there is natural grain and sibilance recorded into the track. Some headphones accentuate both elements and some de-emphasize, and very few are actually neutral. 
the R70 slightly elevated the sibilance about a few decibels. It was not harsh and was a little less than what I hear on the LCD-1, and a whole lot less than the LCD-XC. The grain was just about neutral. The drum and guitar had accurate timbre, though did meld. The vocals were about one step ahead of the mix. The backup vocalist was audible, but her voice melded with the other instruments in the song. In Want You Back by Haim, the R70 again pushed the primary vocalist sibilance just a few decibels. It was not harsh, but it was also not neutral. The primary singer has gravelly emphasis to the word we at 10 seconds into the song, and the R70X recreated that detail accurately. The two backup vocalists appeared with their separate tonalities. However, when the entire mix played at maximum, the backup singers melded somewhat. When I listened closely, I could still hear their different tonalities, one in the left ear cup and the other in the right. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the R70X recreated the drums and ukulele with accurate timbre. The bass guitar was audible, though not bloated. The primary vocalist sounded neutral. His sibilance was not pushed forward and was quite accurate. Separation of instruments was not particularly impressive and they tended to meld. There is one backup vocalist in this song and when I paid very, very close attention, I thought I heard him in the background. Between 1 minute and 10 seconds and 1 minute and 20 seconds of the song, the vocalists have sharp intakes of breaths. The R70X recreated all of those breaths, though it was a little bit veiled. Overall, the mid's response is close to neutral, but for the slight push of female sibilance, the R70X would present natural neutral mids. All instruments sounded full, accurate, and true to their natural timbre. The vocals were never shouty. The guitars sounded like guitars and drums had plenty of emphasis. On the other hand, vocals always seemed at least one step ahead of the instruments. This wasn't bad and as I said, wasn't shouty, but there was something just not quite neutral about it. And the only way I can emphasize this is by saying, if you listen to a truly neutral headphone like the Aventone Planar, you will experience a flatter response where the vocals don't jump out just as much as on the R70X. This isn't bad or good or terrible or fantastic, it's just a slightly different take on, I guess, neutral as far as Audio-Technica is concerned. In my opinion, it's not true neutral, but it's kinda close. Treble is a tricky subject for a lot of people. A headphone may be perfect in everything except a slight push in treble and that will ruin the experience. I am happy to say that the R70X does not ruin the experience. In Scurzo for X-Wings, the R70X allowed the horns and brass to cut through the mix. These instruments had natural timbre and energy. They did not sound harsh or peaky. I could hear the timpani in the background, though it was a little underemphasized. I could not hear individual instruments, but did hear group sets. Each group set was different from its neighbor, but they did tend to meld a little. I heard only a stereo image, left or right. Instruments never appeared from the extreme portions of the ear cups, and there was no depth or verticality. In Flight from the City by Johan Johansson, the R70X recreated the piano as if it was about 8 feet from me. It did not emphasize the bassier notes and in fact rolled them off. The piano sounded full. The slow decay of notes did meld. The cello sounded smooth but also melded with the piano. There is an electric buzz effect throughout the song and I could barely hear it. I sometimes heard the creaking of wood on the piano bench and picked up the sound of the cello being shifted, though both details were a little bit veiled. In Take 5 by the Dave Brubeck Quartet, the R70X rendered the piano in the right ear cup, the drum kit in the left, the saxophone dead center, and the bass somewhere in the mix. All instruments melded slightly but retained their individual tonalities. The saxophone was accurate and not harsh. There were times when the piano became a little too veiled to hear all the notes, and the same was true for the drums. Overall, the treble response was very close to neutral. The R70X does not present harsh instruments and seems to keep things well controlled. Throughout this test, I have tried to explain the details I hear on this headphone. I will not repeat what I said previously, but I will summarize my findings. The R70X does not recreate minute details. Yes, details are present. The sound of singers breathing is sometimes audible, especially if those intakes of breaths are directly into the microphone. The sound of creaking wood was less obvious, the sound of cello being moved was audible. The R70X does nothing exceptional in detail retrieval, and it's about average. 
The major issue I found is the overall dark sound to this headphone, where instruments meld it. On the one hand, this presents a very full sound signature, but on the other hand, details that the headphone is capable of rendering are drowned out or melded. The R70X provides a natural amount of detail, however. The question is, would you hear these types of details in the manner that the R70X renders if you were at a live concert? Yes. I think so. Unless you have a microphone pointed at the pianist's ass, I doubt you'll clearly hear his bench creaking under his weight. And although you should be able to pick up the creaking of cellos as cellists shift the weight, those sounds will pale in comparison to the actual notes being played. So no, not really critical listening, but nothing to be ashamed of either. In this regard, the R70X is not a competitor to the full cal clear the HD800S, or the Austrian Audio Hi X55. But it does fall perfectly in line with headphones like the Aventone Planar and the Allo Audio S4. For a more quantitative test, I use the song New Light by Kazuki. This song has layers of details, including the sound of children playing, wind, rustling of grass, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The king of detail retrieval in this test is the Focal Clear, which presented 18 footsteps in the first 60 seconds. The X55 is the second best and presented 14 to 15 footsteps. The R70X presented 6 to 7 footsteps. This was a little less than the Aventone Planar, but no different from the LCD-1, the NDH-20, and the HD6XX. One thing that the R70X does really well is soundstage. It is rather wide. It is not the widest soundstage I have ever heard, and I think that prize goes to the HD800S. But even among open back headphones, the R70X is wider than many I have heard. The LCD-1, for example, has below average to average soundstage at best. The same is true for the HD6XX and 660S. The Aventone Planar has above average to wide soundstage. The Hi-Fi Man Sundara has above average, and the Hi-Fi Man Diva has above average to wide soundstage. The R70 is very close to the Diva's soundstage. This is quite impressive, considering the excellent mid-bass impact that the R70 provides. I want to emphasize how rare it is to find an open back headphone that renders full, thick bass and yet still has wide soundstage. I cannot agree that the R70X is a neutral headphone. I did not see that word in the Audio Technica marketing, so take my findings as you wish. But Audio Technica does say that the R70X has natural and accurate sound, and it is hard to think of these words as anything other than neutral. The R70X rolls off sub bass, and that is not particularly helpful for bassy songs such as hip hop tracks. The mid bass is full with average decay, but the slam is a little blunted. Vocals may or may not be neutral, depending on the singer. Female vocalists tend to exhibit accentuated sibilance. It is not harsh, but it is a noticeable departure for true neutral. Male vocals remain neutral, however. Regardless, vocals are always ahead of the mix, and with an emphasis, which means that overall, mids are not truly neutral. The treble is very close to neutral, and I would say that you would be splitting hairs when comparing the R70X to the Aventone Planar and the Allo headphones in this regard. What sets the R70X apart from more neutral headphones is the slight push in the mids. Vocals sound more forward in the mix than on the other headphones. The headphone sounds darker too than the Aventone Planar, which is the most neutral headphone I have ever heard. But it is also fairly analog. There is nothing unpleasant about the R70X. The sub bass is certainly lacking, but the mid bass is quite good for an open back headphone. Vocals are easy to listen to. The treble is well extended without harshness. If you wanted to mix your music with these headphones, you probably would not be making a mistake. On the other hand, this headphone is not for critical listening. Details do not jump out. Instruments melt. Imaging is average. The headphone does not have verticality or depth. Is the R70X a good product? Well, there is nothing sonically objectionable about it. It does everything competently and some better than others. 
Sub bass is lackluster. Mid bass is very good for an open back. Sound stage is excellent. Detail is average. Imaging is average. And the overall tonality of the headphone, its tuning, is pretty unique. I cannot gripe about Audio Technica's marketing since they were fairly conservative with it. The R70X is not a critical listening tool, so that promise was not true. But as far as natural, accurate sound, yes. I think you could technically hear natural sound as you would at a live concert. There is no singular killer feature of this headphone. Instead, I think that the combination of all the features, good and bad, make the headphone a unique experience. Comfort is questionable, though it might improve over time. The tonality of the headphone is more akin to closed back headphones, which is a positive in my book, especially if you're hoping to get a robust full sound signature. Soundstage is very good, open back headphone or not. So yes, the R70X is a pleasant headphone and would be for a lot of people, I think. It is a little less expensive than the LCD One, but does outperform that headphone in a number of ways. The overall sound is a little clearer on the R70X. The R70X has significantly wider soundstage. The R70X has clearer, more accurate mids. And the R70X has fairly comparable treble to the LCD One. It is $150 cheaper than the NDH20 and bests that headphone in the same ways as it outdoes the LCD One. Compared to the Aventone Planar and the Allo Audio headphones, well, the R70X isn't neutral. Let's just leave it at that. Is $350 a fair price for the R70X? No, I don't think so. The unimpressive build, proprietary cable, and average detail retrieval and clarity does not justify that price tag. I think $250 to $300 is the sweet spot.